All right, so welcome back. And in this lecture, we're going to start to use a new service from Firebase. And last time, we have seen how the Firebase authentication service works. Um, that's how you handle the user management, account management. Uh, but in general, we want to save more kind of data uh, for different purposes, and then you will need to have a general purpose database. So the database we're going to use is something called a Firebase real-time database. Actually, come back to the Firebase portal. All right, so this is the authentication service. Now we want to switch to the database tab. In Firebase, there are actually two different kind of database. All right, so the one they're promoting right now is called a Cloud Firestore database. Okay, that is one. And then there's another one, which is called real-time database. All right, so I think eventually everything will be moved to the Cloud Firebase database, but I will actually would recommend Actually, you consider this real-time database because this is the original database that provides a lot of cool features, especially about real-time updates. And even though this first one claims they have real-time updates, I don't know how cool that feature is. So I will probably start with a real-time database since everything here is very clear, very easy to use. Um, so we can um, do more kind of cool things with the real-time database first. But the two databases are pretty similar. I, I just feel that the UI and the operation side, this one is a little bit easier to use, right? So first of all, you have to create a database. Make sure you click on the real-time database, okay? Not the top one. So I'm gonna create a database right here. And then here you wanna choose whether you wanna do the locker mode or test mode. Definitely do the test mode because this one, you don't have to do any kind of authentication. You can just directly read and write. It's just much easier for you to start the development. So I'm gonna start with the test mode and then enable it. Once this is finished, and then you will basically go to this kind of a portal. As you can see, it's similar to the other service in Firebase. Um, so this is what a database is, right? So the Firebase database is a NoSQL database. Um, NoSQL database is basically a giant hash table where you save everything as a key and value. So for example, let me show you some example. If you want to show, I want to save some kind of a student information, friend information, I got a name, that's my key. Uh, the value could be John. Okay, I click on add, and then that's how you can save this record right here. And I can do, I save the school, and then the value is Cal Poly, Pomona. I click on add, and that saved the school. I want to save the major, and the value is computer science. All right, so you could actually save all the information with key value pairs, just like this, right? Um, and then do one more phone number, and the phone number is some kind of number here, and then you save everything here. Okay, so that's how you save everything into the Firebase database. Key value pairs. You always need to know what is your key, what is your value, okay? Now, you can also save more complicated data. You can save, for example, what if I want a list of students, right? So this is only one student. So let's actually do this. I'm gonna click on the Add button, and you can actually create multiple levels for your data um, records. So for example, I'm gonna create a, kind of like a folder. I call it the students, okay? So this one here is gonna save multiple students, all right? But if you have multiple students and then every student will have the same attribute, you gotta differentiate them. And when you try to differentiate them, well, you actually need to do uh, a different ID for them, right? So I'm gonna create another level right here. As you can see, it goes to the next level. And then first of all, I need to provide an ID for the students. For example, a student will call the student 001. All right, so that is the ID for the first student. And then enter this student. It's just like another folder, right? And then we click on the add. That's when you can do the same thing. Name, Thomas, and major, and electrical engineer. And let's do another one, a like phone number. All right, click on add. Now this time I save another record for students just like this one, but it's actually under the student 001 and then so under students, uh, the big folder right here. So you can see, you can open and expand, you can see multiple students. So if you understand this one, you can actually add another one as called STU002. And then it has the same attributes, it's called a name, Alice. And then we can add a phone number And then we can add another major. All right, click on add. So the second student shows up, right? So you basically can organize all of the data into these different levels, depending on what you want. But keep in mind one thing that 
um, every data you save, you must provide the key. You must know where the position is. And that's, that's how Firebase database is managing your data. It's all with a key value pair type of a database. So it's very easy to use. The reason we use a key value pair, the hash table, is because of performance. It's super scalable. It's very fast for you to retrieve the data, especially when you have a huge uh, data set. All right, so that's kind of a quick walkthrough of how the Firebase database works. When you start to code it, you will actually understand more about how it works. All right, so let's catch it coming back to our Flutter code. All right, so right here, and then uh, we are coming back to this uh, list view screen here, right? So previously I showed you a little example. You click on the button right here, and then you just add like one student here randomly. But then this one has nothing to do with the Firebase. So we want to save a new student and then put that into a Firebase. All right, so let's try to try the, how that works. And maybe I'm gonna do another brand new screen here to let us to type a new um, student information, right? So I will actually try to do something really quick here. All right, so maybe I'll do, uh, go back here. Uh, let's actually see which one to start with. So um, maybe I'll actually just add something. Uh, maybe maybe let's just actually do a new screen here. Okay, I'll just do a new screen here. I'll kind of add friend. Okay, something really quickly. Okay, add to UFUL and add friend page. All right, so something we have done this many times. Let's actually import material design. And then right here, we do a scarfold, the body. And then uh, we just need a, I would just do a center first. And the child, I would do a column, children. And then from here, we actually need to bring a lot of the uh, a, uh, maybe input boxes. So I'm going to go back to the in, to login here. So I will try this uh, text field. Just copy the same code over. Text field, add friend here. We do one text field. And we need a controller, obviously. We already understand what a controller is. So we will need some name controller to record the, the friend name. Right. And then we need a phone number controller, text editing. And then finally, we need uh, maybe a major. Actually, let's do a type. I see our example here is based on type. All right, so text editing controller. Okay, three attributes. So this one is for name, and I change it to name. And then we need to do the same thing for major, a phone, and also the type. All right, so that's our new screen here. I think uh, we got it, right? And then we need one more button below it. A button, uh, let's just do a read button. Child, that's a text, add friend. On press, we press it, and then what's going to happen? That's where we fill up all the Firebase code. All right, so let's come in back to the previous screen where we can trigger it. So we go to the right here, and this time when you click on the uh, add button here, and we're not going to do this one, and uh, we will actually do uh, go to the next screen to do it. All right, so let's actually go here, and we need to use the navigator code one more time. I often just go to copy it from somewhere. Okay, so I will just do this. I will go to add friend page. All right, we run the app and then click on this button. All right, so it brings that to the next screen right here. Okay, let's bring this one in the middle so that we can see that easier. So we go here, go to column. There is the main access alignment. We'll just do a center, rerun it, and then since we can pick up to the center. Okay, so now we can type the name and uh, uh, phone number and time and click on the button. We're gonna add that to the Firebase database. All right. So first of all, make sure we can actually grab all the values, right? So let's see, we can get the name, controller.txt, and then we also want to do uh, also the uh, phone number and also the type, all right? So rerun the app, so name is John, oops. So go here, we're gonna do John, 
and phone number one two three type is home and click on add all right so as you can see we can actually grab this value so now we can start to send the value to firebase all right so to do the firebase this time we're going to do the firebase database all right so let me show you how that works so the code is very similar to the firebase authentication again you can actually find uh, all of those from the official documentation okay let's just just find it here flutter firebase database and find out that package remember the package i talked about right here so it's from this documentation you can see the examples that actually gives us some of the ideas on how it works all right but i'm going to just provide you a most straightforward code to do this all right so let's do this firebase database dot instance as well allows you to find all the instance object you can use to talk to the firebase click on dot reference all right from here well you need to set up uh, something called child so this this first part here basically locate the firebase database you have you already set up so basically the root level right here we know it's a flutter summer database now the child that you can see you provide a pass here Okay, the pass is just like this. If you want to save something under students, under student 001, 02, and then you have to specify that. For example, I'm going to add one more called student 003. I will do something called students slash 003, uh, student 003. That will allow me to put my uh, new record under a new uh, little subfolder right there. Okay, so that's what the child means. This is just the pass. Okay, once you locate that and you want to say what kind of value you want to put there. So I want to put another set of major name phone or maybe name phone type. Okay, I'm not going to do major. So let's actually try this. This way you go need to do something called a dot set. All right. When you set, you can actually provide a whole hash table in it. All right. So I'm going to write this way. You can do a hash table just like a name coming from name controller phone phone controller and then you can do the type type controller all right so basically you locate the position and you set the value which is the whole record like this and after that it's not done it's also you need to do some kind of then to make sure everything has been done successfully dot catch error make sure you don't have anything wrong here that concludes the whole writing operation let's add something here just failed to add and then you can just print the error this one here successfully added the student the friend all right that's how it works. Let's try it. So I'm gonna refresh, rerun this app. John one two three. I'll do the new number here one 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 one, and then click on add friend. All right. So successfully added a friend. Let's see what happens. Let's go back here. So we got a student zero zero three. John phone number home. That's what I typed. Okay. Let me show you one more time. Please watch this one here. It's real time. Okay. So I'm gonna change the number into nine seven six five four. Three, two, one, one. All right, this one I go. I'm gonna change to work. Add a friend. As you can see, immediately this one got updated. And if I change the name, John Smith, and I add a friend, and this one got updated. Now you might be wondering why every time when I add a friend, it actually updated the same thing. Well, the reason is because of this. Because your past, you never change it. Um, because that's specified where you want to save this data. All right, let me play around with it. So what if I want to do like, uh, I don't call, call it friends, students, I call it friends. If I do friends, and I'm going to rerun this again, and let's see what happens. All right, so this time I'm going to change it to another, again, go back to John. This one is a cell phone. I'm, I'm going to click on add friends. All right, so this time, as you can see, a new folder called friends has been added. Under there is also called stu 3 and then that's the same. This is the data I just input right here. The reason it didn't go to the uh, students is because I um, changed the pass. 
just a different folder, and if the folder doesn't exist, Firebase will create that for you. Or I can change this one ID. I can say this is four. Okay, if I rerun this, and then click on add. All right, so this time I actually go to the new place. So that actually shows you how important this path is because this one determines where you want to save it, whether you want to create a new one, or you want to uh, just override the existing one. If you use the same key, then you're going to just override the existing one. So that's how it works. And so obviously, if you want to add a friend, we don't want to override it each time. So this number had to be changed, had to be like uh, sequential, right, or unique. So there are different ways to generate a unique number. And one way we can do it is just use the timestamp, right? So in Flutter, uh, we can do uh, like Dart. Okay, Dart timestamp. How do we get a timestamp? So it looks like you can do a new uh, date time now and many seconds since upload time, All right? So I can do this. I'll call it, create a variable called timestamp will be this. All right, each time this one represents the number of seconds passed since 1970, January 1st at midnight. And uh, so this number is always unique, it keeps going. So it's, it's a very simple way for you to generate some kind of a unique but sequential number. Okay, we use that timestamp. And then you can put this one into your um, ID here. So I'm gonna add this one here, at the timestamp. But I think you need to turn that into a string, otherwise it will be an exception. So this way I can turn that into a variable so that each time is different and I can just add my, my friend into the database one by one. So let me try this one here. Go back, let's actually watch the database. All right, so I'm gonna try different things. This time I do a band and then a different number and this one here will be home. I click on add. All right, so this time you can see it's a student and then the ID right here. Okay, and then it's the information. And if I try to do another one, this time I will do uh, Carson and then I do friends. All right, so another one, right? So each time is different because that number got changed. That number is this time step. All right, so to understand the Firebase, really you need to know the structure very well. And then um, once you know where the path is, what is the key and ID you're using, and you will know where the data will go. So that's actually how it works. All right. So this is a simple piece of code that you probably will need. Something called Firebase Database Instance Reference and Child, and then you set. This is how you write the data. Next time we're going to show you how do you read the data. Okay, the set is the way to actually get the data, uh, put the data to the Firebase Database. All right. And right here, you can really put anything you want. You can put some other things, like you want to do an image. And I don't want to type image URL, but you can place like a uh, placeholder. Okay, let's actually just do a placeholder using some of the links we provided right here. Maybe this one, and just use that, and just put it here always. Okay, add another attribute, and then rerun this app. Just go back here, and this time I'm gonna add another student here. I'll do that, and then click on add friends, and then this new friend here got some new URL here. Okay, so whatever is sent, it will be saved to the Firebase. It's super fast, and you can also see that they changes automatically right here. Okay, so depending on the purpose, you can have multiple folders, multiple relationships, and that all works.